Welcome back to Movie Trailer Reviews on the MTR Network. This is Chris here, and I got Phenom on the line here, and uh, we're here to review, even though uh, uh, Phenom couldn't make this one, uh, we're here to review uh, the Hitman's body Bodyguard. Uh, the world's top bodyguard gets a new client, a Hitman, who must testify in an international court of justice. They must put together their differences aside, put their differences aside and work together to make it to the trial on time. Uh, the director is Patrick Hughes. Have you... Uh, do you know what he's done before? Patrick Hughes? Yeah. No, I've never heard the name. All right. I'm looking it up Neither. right now. Uh, Patrick Hughes, he's done uh, uh, Expendables 3, Red Hill, and that's basically it. So this is like his third movie. That I mean, he's got a bunch of short films. What is Red Hill? I have no idea what Red Hill is. I've never heard of that before. I know Expendables 3 because obviously I saw it and it wasn't that great. Let's exactly. see. Red Hills has a young police officer must survive his first day's duty uh, in a small country. Yeah, it's a small. Mm. It's a really. I think it's a small indie film. So, uh, but anyway, so uh, we're not really here for the directors. Uh, the film, and honestly, when I get into this review, it's really about the two top two people. Even though they're not, for some reason, they'll list Sam Jackson in, in order at, the, at top billing on IMDb, but. Actually, uh, you know, obviously Sam Jackson, uh, oh, he's something Kincaid is his last name. I can't remember the first name of his character. Ryan Reynolds is Michael Bryce. They have uh, Elodie Young uh, and Gary Oldman. That's really all. There are other characters in this film. Um, Selma Hayek, and, but that's about it. Like, Selma's still on my shit list, so. What, what is she on your shit list for? Um, that that uh, Jessica Jones. Jessica Jones. That Jessica Williams incident where she didn't understand oh. what Jessica Williams was talking about, but kept telling her that you need to not like you're, you're being too. Basically, she was saying you're being too sensitive while other older white actresses was like, no, you should probably hear this black girl out. Huh? So, you know, um, this is a little bit of a safe space and kind of ties into uh, something that I wanted to talk about anyway. That was this movie. And I guess we'll jump right into this because this is not a really big part of this movie. So I feel like this is a safe space, even though I'm putting this out on the internet for a thousand people to download. Um, Selma Hayek can't really act, can she? I mean, is that Sophia Vergara or Vergara or whatever you want to say to me is a better actress and has had better roles than Selma Hayek has. Selma Hayek has been pretty much the pretty damsel in every film take all going all the way back to what desperado was yeah, that her in desperado yeah, yeah it was her in desperado i feel like i mean outside of that or she plays the over-the-top stereotypical mexican woman which, which is, is the damsel which is kind basically. of a, yeah because in this movie she's she's um uh uh uh, uh darius kincaid is, is uh, samuel jackson's character she plays his wife and she's locked up and she's just yeah it's just like really over the top stereotype kind of cuz they couldn't she, get Sophie. Yeah, well, I mean, you know what the thing about it is? The film isn't really that good enough to get her. <laughs> so I'm not surprised by this, but like Sophia did Chef. Yeah. With uh, John Favreau and that is an amazing film. Well, right? And she yeah. kind of plays the the ex-wife that he's still in love with that supports him and still loves him but just isn't with him because he's going through some emotional stuff like he's having some issues getting his life together but she's like willing and even though she uh, in my opinion is way too hot for John Favreau she <laughs> you know can't wait to, for him to get his shit together so she can make panini sandwiches with him but, on his food truck that's because Chef is a good film like and here's the thing, that's not to say that this film is inter- it's not to say that the hitman's bodyguard is it's not entertaining it's an entertaining film but it's an entertaining film because, and what you all would suspect, Ryan Reynolds and Samuel L. Jackson are hilarious together. But the reason why it works is I'm, and again, I didn't do a lot of research on this film, but I'm pretty sure about 90% of their dialogue together is them improv I do not believe it was written to say the shit they're saying to each other in the script. That is what makes this film. That's the only reason why, because this film is actually long. It's almost two hours. It should be 90 minutes. No. Nope. It's nope. almost two hours. Literally, it's two minutes short of two hours. 118 minutes. Um, mm-hmm. 
and it feels too long. It, it, it is. It's way. It's twenty minutes. Way too long. Um, and it's just like their their banner together is great, but it feels like it should be a buddy cop movie. So, question is this: Is their buddy cop banter better? Than Denzel and Mark Wahlberg two Ooh. guns. Given the fact that Denzel that Mark Wahlberg can't act for shit, so the reason why I find that hard to compare is because Two Guns is actually a good movie. I like Two Guns. I own Two Guns. Yeah, I, I own Two Guns. So it's like it's hard for me to compare because Two Guns is actually a good film top to bottom. But that banner is pretty good. But it's also it's just a good fucking film. Okay. With who's the worst actress in the buddy cop film? Paula Patton or Selma Hayek? Oh, Selma Hayek by, by far. By far. Wow. Well, Did you know it, how bad Paula Patton is at acting? Well, you, you wonder why? You wonder why? Because Paula Patton wasn't getting a lot to do in Two Guns. Like, they, they keep going back to this thing with basically so what they do. Know. So, because basically so. what they do is Samuel Jackson plays the assassin, uh, Darius Kincaid, and Selma Hayek is his, um, his wife. And they have this whole thing. She's supposed to be like. This bat, he fell in love with her because she saw, she watched him. Uh, he watched her like take out all, kill all these 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 dudes who grabbed her butt in this in this uh, 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 bar area. And again, it's it's a funny scene, and it's great just because Sam Jackson this is fucking hilarious. But she's such a bad actress in that scene that it kind of downplays a little bit. I mean, it's, it, it, you get a better actress in that scene, and it's it's probably way funnier than. It was like I I laughed out. I thought it was good, but if they actually got a better actress in it, it it would have stuck a little, landing a little bit better. But um, yeah. So I mean, this, what is go what is uh? And I don't know how to. I guess Elodie uh, or I think, Lodi, I think it's a Lodi Young. I might is be a Lodi. I think so. what's she doing in this? Well, so that's the other problem too. So she's actually the better actress in this film, but she's not giving all the do. So basically, what she is is. So let me give you the rundown of this film. Um. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, Michael Bryce is Ryan Reynolds, and he is this triple A rated executive protection agent bodyguard. He runs this company. Uh, the beginning of the film starts off with his he lo he loses a client, so he's down on his luck, and he's down to like basically hit, his company's gone. He's literally down to like you know doing bodyguard duty for like coked out you know mob mob lawyers and things like or financial lawyers and things like that. You find out that his ex is uh, a little young. I think her name is Amelia Roussel. And she's an Interpol agent. And so this whole thing revolves around the idea that Darius Kincaid, they've already captured him, which is the thing kind of sucked for me. I was like, oh, wait, so he's already in jail? Um, he's supposed to testify against Gary Oldman's character, who is this former dictator who's a really, really bad guy. And so it basically turns into this thing where you got to beat the clock. There's a... Inter, you know, Interpol has obviously has a mole in it, and you see the guy who I'm not even going to tell you who the guy is because once you see him in the film, you're going to go, "Oh, he's the fucking mole." Stop doing, just stop doing that in films. Stop casting the guy who is always the mole to be the mole in your film because we're going to know as soon as we see him. As soon as you see him, we go, "Oh, he's a mole." Um, so. Uh, Young's character, Amelia, has to rely on her ex-boyfriend, Bryce, to get uh, Kincaid to the courtroom in 24 hours so we can testify against this, um, uh, so we can testify against this, this uh, Gary Oldman's character, the, the, the former dictator. And it, it's, it's paint by numbers. It's, it's a film you've always seen. You've always seen this kind of thing where... You know the the law enforcement agents get compromised. So you have to you have to bring together the you know the outside guy to get this other guy to from point A to point B, and that's what this film is. It's very simple. Um, there's a couple of twists and turns here in terms of that you see coming. Like there's you see the twist that the connection between Kincaid and and, and Bryce. You see that one coming. Like it, it's 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 the script is so fucking basic. You're not going to be shocked or surprised by anything happens. Um, Gary Oldman is Gary Oldman, and I think they told him it was a more serious film than the one he's acting in. I don't think he's capable of unoveracting, and I'm not saying that in a bad way. Like Gary yeah. Oldman is an amazing actor. I don't think that he's well, able to pull like pull back. Well, 
I think he respects his craft and is dedicated way too much for them to like if you hand if you're paying him and you hand mm-hmm. him a script, he's gonna Gary Oldman it. Well, it, it's partly that, but I also think it's because the tone of the script is all off. So and this goes back to why I think that this would be a better film as a actual buddy cop film. Think back to the Lethal Weapons films, right? Like those Love are them. those are those are funny films, you know, comedy action films, right? But they also have serious tones in them. Like there's like there are some serious moments, like when when uh um when uh, uh which one is um which one calls uh Mel Gibson's character, huh? You said what? Which one's Mel Gibson's character? That's Riggs. Um, that's Riggs. You remember when Riggs? They always had that scene at the end of the movie where Riggs is beating up the bad guy. Right, and it's and it's like a fair, serious fucking, scene. especially in the first one. It's a serious fucking scene where it's just him in the back, and they they fucking fight, and it's just a real ass fucking scene. Yeah, like it's still fun. It's a funny movie, but the tone of it, you already you always know that they're gonna be serious. That's the problem with this film is that the best parts of this film are just a comedy between uh, Sam Jackson Jackson and, and Ryan Reynolds. But then the the Gary him testifying as Gary Oldman's character, he doing it because he committed genocide. Like at one point in the film, you see him he kills a a a a, a, a uh, this professor he kills his uh, this professor's wife and kid. So like it's a serious thing, but everything else around the film outside of things with Gary Oldman are not serious. They're not treated to be serious. Like, um, again, going back to the, the relationship between uh, Samuel Jack- L. Jackson's character and um, uh, uh, Salma, Salma Hayek's character, there's nothing funny. There, there's nothing serious about those scenes. There just isn't. Like, there's nothing serious outside of Gary Oldman's character. So it's like everything involving him is in a little box where it's serious. Everything else around it is not taken seriously. And so there's a lot of tone issues in how they did the script. And they just, again, this guy, he's not, you know, directing wise. And whoever wrote the film too, uh, Tom, Tom O'Connor, they, they just didn't know how to smooth that over. And seeing what he wrote, he only, he only like wrote two other things. Like the guy who wrote this film hasn't written a film since 2012. So like, what is the relationship? Like, what is the actual like relationship and dynamic between, Ryan Reynolds and Samuel Jackson that like would set this movie apart from anything else buddy cop related. Like what would make me watch this film over possibly watching the other guys again for the 500th time? Well, the only thing different is um, I think you get a, you, you, you get them being the best. You really, it's not really about them being their characters. You get Ryan Reynolds being Ryan Reynolds and Samuel L. Jackson being Samuel L. Jackson as basically buddy cops in the movie. Ryan Reynolds is playing, he's a meticulous, by the numbers guy who plans everything out. And Sam Jackson, because he's older is in and just doesn't give a fuck, he don't give a fuck about anything else. So there's that one scene in the trailer where you see uh Samuel Jackson jump off the fucking building and shit like that. Like he does that shit all the time. Like he hasn't planned anything out. And all he does is does old Sam Jackson, old black Sam Jackson shit where he just he just be he just be saying motherfucker like every five seconds. Like he says motherfucker in this movie more than I think any other film he's fucking done. And that's why I don't think that any of it was written. I think he did it all. Matter of fact, there was a, I think it was a New York Times article that did a profile on him. And he had talked about how he had ma- he put a little spin on some of the, 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 um, the dialogue. And you see at the beginning of it, it was some, it was a racial joke he made at the beginning of the fucking film. Oh, I know what it was. Um, they're sitting there and they're telling him, listen. If you do what we want you to do, we'll let your we'll let your we'll let your wife out of jail. He's like, well, she's innocent. We she didn't do anything. He's like, well, just sign the paper. We'll let him out. He goes, that's mighty white of you. And he just keeps doing shit like that. Like it's it's shit that he just adds in there. And I don't think that it was ever in the fucking script. And there's a lot of just motherfucker this motherfucker that. And I, I found the dialogue between the two of them hilarious. Because he just he just really just gets on Ryan Reynolds' nerves in this film, because because Ryan Reynolds would be like, all right, we need to plan this out, we need to do this, we need to do this, and you just get this old black guy going, no, nah, I'm not doing that, and he just goes and does it, 
So that dynamic is really fun and really cool, but not two hours cool. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like if it was an hour and a half, I could have dealt with that. Um, but it's not an hour and a half. It's two hours. And you're just like, all right, I need you guys to wrap this shit up because, all right, we, we you know how this is going to end. Like the end of this movie is never in doubt. You're never you're never caught off guard by anything that happens. It's just like everything you're like, yeah, duh, of course that happened. You know, and you're only really here to see Ryan Reynolds and Sam Jackson like curse at each other and get on each other's nerves. You know, so I, I like I said, I didn't hate the film, uh, but it's also not a good film. You know, this is one of those ones that like literally if it's if it's on the background, and you're watching it, you'll watch a couple scenes here and there. But I can't see you actually going out there and putting money towards it because it just it, it. Why? You know, yeah, I'm I'm not on the fence about this yeah. anymore. Um, I'm like, like I'm going, going the thing. Yeah. I'm down the street. Yeah. Going going down to a load of young, her character oh, disappears. They, in the middle of the film, they they basically sideline her, and we all know she's Electra in you know in in in, in the Daredevil. We've, she's going to be in, in Defenders, like she and, and they and they have him. Huh? You said what now? I'm saying is she's about to be great again tomorrow right. around three a.m. Right. So like you, you you they use her at the beginning of the film, and then she gets a little bit of action at the end. But in the middle of the film, they basically sideline her. She doesn't do anything. So it's just like. The other characters aren't developed. Like, there's this one guy, and I don't even know his fucking name, but they make it seem like he is, like, going to be, like, the tough guy that's going to be hard for them to take down. He does have a fight scene that's kind of... And I'll give him to him. The... It, it definitely is... I'm pretty sure it's got to be R-rated. This is, this is an R-rated film, because all the motherfuckers. It's got to be R-rated. And um, when people get shot, oh, it's fucking brutal. Like, at one point, somebody gets shot. Somebody gets... um Almost gets hung by a, a chain and then get shot to the chest and it's it's fucking brutal but um yeah the actions are a lot of the action scenes like the hand to hand combat they're kind of quick cut not the worst i've seen but uh when you come back from something like you know we talked about this film uh atomic blonde you know they pull the camera back you see what was going on See how those action scenes work again, not John Wick level, but it's still something you can actually, you know, you see the blows, you see the the action going on. Yeah, not the same thing here. Just not. You know, it's, you know, again, it's it's middle of the road. Middle of the road. I mean, I don't know. I I had hoped that they would either pick over the top ridiculous short comedy, maybe action film, but just dumb action film. Mm-hmm. But I can't do two hours. We actually trying to make some deep shit here with this cast of people. Uh, but the thing, or it, it's not even trying to not be even deep. deep. Yeah, it's, it's, I don't want to say deep, but just trying to make something that's that might be too cohesive. Yeah, like we just didn't have. We're not having the amount of fun that we should with this, right? That's kind of what I'm looking for if I'm going to see a film like this. And I, I don't know, man, something about the trailers. At first, I was like, oh, that's a genius idea. Like, I'm all for that. And then after a while, I was kind of like, something don't, something don't taste right in the air. Every time I see this trailer for this movie, I feel like I feel like it is definitely. It's like Drake's next album of buddy cop films for me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, you'll hear a single, you'll go, OK, Drake might be doing his thing on this one. And then for some reason, the closer you get to the release date of the album, you start to realize that it's Drake's seventh album. And to me, I'm looking at this and I'm going, this is like the 13th attempt at a buddy cop whatever. Yeah. I wonder if they actually going to try to be creative with this shit or if they just think, if we just throw Ryan Reynolds and Samuel Jackson together, big bucks at the cinema, laugh, 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 fun, fun, fun. And I'm like, that's really, it takes more than having two, what I, who, two of my favorite actors. Mm-hmm. Just forced together in a film, man. It's it's ice cream and bacon, dog. Well, at this point, I just well, they like, don't. And, put and that's the thing. Like, it's a, if you take if you take any you take any other pair of actors and put them in this film, I don't think the film's watchable. See, like, and that's to me that's sad. That one that's sad. Two, 
it why haven't we gotten a buddy a female buddy cop film yet yeah like the closest we've got is Miss Congeniality, mm-hmm. and I don't understand why we haven't. Oh, you gotten... know, you got you got what was it? Wasn't the Heat one? No, it wasn't a buddy cop film. Like I don't uh, think both of them were cops uh, in the Heat. Or were they? Oh, yes, they were. Yes, they were. Yeah, um, they were cops. Yes, they were. So yeah, that was the last one we got, and that actually was good. Like the yeah. Heat was actually really dumb, fun, hilarious movie. That's the closest we get, though. Yeah. And I guess what I was also thinking from like, like I want to see um, what's the actress's name that's that's from Girls Trip? Oh, Tiffany Haddish. T- yeah, Tiffany Tiffany with Haddish. I think that's her name. Yeah, Haddish. I want to see her in a buddy cop film, hmm. not with Kevin Hart or any other comedian that y'all want to stick and shove or black male comedian y'all want to shove in a film with her. And I definitely don't want to see her alongside like Ice Cube with mean mugging the whole fucking film. Like, I would legit like to see that type of or different strain of buddy cop film. Something, man. I just, I don't, oh, look, it's Ryan Reynolds and Samuel Jackson. He's going to be, like, he's not going to listen to this white boy, and this white boy is going to get tired of his black shit. Like, it's, no, that's, that's literally what this is. Like, I mean, it's pretty they, much, like, you and, get that from the trailer. I'm yeah. not surprised by that at all. Yeah. And, and, and again, like I said, not saying that it doesn't have its hilarious moments. Cause there definitely are some hilarious moments in this film. Like it, it's got, it's got, it's got those moments in there. It really, really does. But that's it. That's all it has. Like it only has those. When it's not those two, everything else is just like, oh, that's right. There actually is a film. There actually is a plot, and they're actually oh, supposed to be doing something here. You have this fake ticking clock where you got to get him to the to the court, and I'm like, that's not how any of this shit would fucking work. To begin, with. like it just, I don't know it. Yeah, it, it it just the the when you when you're outside of these two, the film doesn't make any fucking sense. It doesn't make a lick of fucking sense at all. Um, but those two uh, uh, themselves, it's fine. Like it's 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 what you would expect. Like you know, you get you 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 know, Sam Jackson unofficial catchphrase is motherfucker, and you get that in every. Tone and inflection Sam Jackson can do, like you you get that you're gonna get that you know Ryan Reynolds has that whole the blank look of you know the um, somehow even the passive aggressive just like but I just want to just do this and you're not gonna do that and just start mumbling talking to himself thing he has that moment like there's one funny moment in there where and you kind of see in the trailer it's when uh uh Sam Jackson's character has gone off rogue again and. Ryan Reynolds is just sitting there at the bar going, I'm not going to help him this time. And he's just sitting there trying to take a drink and he's just talking to the bartender and all like chaos is erupting all behind him. Like people are shooting, people are getting dying, shit is flying all over the place. And Ryan Reynolds is just sitting there like complaining like, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to help him. Today. He did this. He ruined my life. He did all this stuff. And he's just, as he's taking drinks and things like that, talking to himself. And it's just like, it's, it's a actually really fucking funny scene. But that's all you got. Like you really only get those two. If not for these two, and that's the mark of a film to me. If I remove these two, it's kind of like um, Atomic Blonde. If you remove Charlie Theron and and James McAvoy from that film, that film is not good. You put mm-hmm. anybody else. You put any other. You put another woman in that film. You put another uh, that's not of uh, Charlie's uh, uh, of a caliber. You put another uh, actor in there who's not of uh, James McAvoy's ca- uh, caliber, and that film is shitty. And that's what happened. And that's what happens with this film. Except the thing, the problem is, <clears throat> we're not. It's not even that Sam Jackson and Ryan Reynolds are acting here. And I think, you know, I know people have their issues with with, with, with Ryan Reynolds, but I think that you put him. You, Ryan Reynolds needs a right script for him to to act the way you want him to act. And I think he just gets some really bad scripts. But this film is not them acting. He's not acting at all. He's just being Ryan Reynolds, and Sam Jackson is just being Sam Jackson. And that works for their dynamic, and but it would be so much better as a, a um as a buddy cop movie. But it's not a buddy cop movie, so it's like it's like it's a buddy cop movie, but they're not trying to be a buddy cop movie. I don't know. It's it's just really weird, and somehow it can't act worth, worth a damn. So there's that. Yeah, so. she's she's attractive though, so that's all that matters, right? That's what'll get us. In I mean, that's seats. really what it is. I mean, it's literally her scenes are literally her. Sitting there, like being abusive to other people, like in Spanish. 
Yeah, it's never done anything for me. Yeah, like, no, I, I think uh, yeah, Selma Hayek is gorgeous, but I'm just not the one that goes to see films because there's a beautiful chick in it. Yeah, just I'm, not doing anything. I'm more blown away by women that can actually act or that are fucking funny on screen. Like that'll get me in the seat. But Selma Hayek's titties aren't getting me in the seat. Like titties are on Google, titties are Google away, sir. Like I'm not. Yeah, so it's I just, just yeah. Oh, it's not for it doesn't do anything for I don't me. Know. Sorry. Just, hmm. Yeah. So before anybody yeah. hits me, I'm going. Oh, she can look. I like Desperado. That's one of my favorite films. I, I do, but it, that's also not a well acted film either. I just like that film. So there's that. Yeah. yeah so you know, we all. Do it, it is what it is. Um, I, yeah. Yeah. Uh, rating wise, rating wise, I, I really was gonna give it a five out of ten. I'm gonna give it a six just because I did I'm laugh. Say, it sounds like a six. It's a it six. Sounds- it's a six. six. It's a sol- it's a solid six because again, and I don't think there's any, well actually no because I said there's another coming out this weekend. I actually want to go see Lucky Logan, and apparently Logan. Good Time, and, and apparently Good Time, the film that you were going to go see on um, Monday, we we couldn't make, make it to was also good too. Um, yeah. So there are other good films. Another- yeah, it's not just those two. Yeah. There's um I w- I actually and I'm gonna shoot myself in the foot saying this. I actually want to go see this fucking Patty Cakes film <laughs> about this white chick trying to become a rapper. Like uh, just yeah, yeah, you have that one. You got that. Got to do it. I got to do it for my ratchet peoples. Yeah, you got and that one. Pretty yeah. much lining up on both sides with critics and yeah, like reviews I read. It's it seems like some very offensive white shit that I'm just gonna laugh at. Yeah, you have fun with that. Yeah, so there are other films out there, but if you just want like, and you have you've already seen Girls Trip, and you just want another, you just want to laugh at you know Sam Jackson and. Ryan Reynolds being offensive motherfucker. Like again, like the insults that they throw at each other, particularly Sam Jackson throwing at Ryan Reynolds, are fucking hilarious. Like he just like he is the most disrespectful black man. <laughs> like that you know, after the week we've had with Charlottesville and everything else going on, if you need if you need a film to decompress to where you watch a black man just belittle and berate a white man. Go check this film out. You're going to love this fucking film. No bullshit. I, no, no, when I think of it that way, that's where I think a lot of my enjoyment came at. Like, he's just, he is the biggest asshole to Ryan Reynolds' character. And he takes so much pleasure in ruining his life. It is great. So, um, yeah, 6 out of 10. You know, go, go and watch it if you want to. It's, you know, you'll laugh. You'll have fun. So, like I said, at this point, if you really want to go see this film, I don't think you're going to leave being disappointed. You know? I have questions if you really want to go see it. I just, what, what's your motivation? No, there's that. No, 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 there's that. So. Anyway, folks, that's it. Um, I don't even know what comes out next week. There's a, there, there's a bunch of films I want to go see, too. I want to go see. We never got one for Annabelle Creation. I wanted is, to see it, but I, yeah, we didn't get, I, we didn't get one for it. that. So I'm gonna, I might, I might do some movies this weekend or, or you know, I know Defenders comes out tomorrow. Well, you know, three o'clock in the morning. I'm going to try to, I might stay home. I might, I might play, I might, I might skip out of work tomorrow. I'm getting off early. Yeah. So I'm going to figure something out. I'm already on it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I might, I might go to the theater because there's a bunch of movies that I wanted to see, but we never got around to see. I still haven't seen Dunkirk in 70 millimeter. I wanted to do that. So I don't want to see it for some reason. Like, I just don't care about a war film. I, I'm, I you know what? I, 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 I just don't care. So I, I don't, I kind of don't want to either because I feel like I'm going to be bored, but then it's also his shortest film. So it's like only like an hour and 40 minutes. So then I'm like, well, I can probably sit through an hour and 40 minutes. So I don't know. We'll, we'll see. This is why I, I didn't, I, I, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't like, I want it. Like, I kind of want to see Baby Driver again, <laughs> like over yeah, some of these other yeah, films. Yeah. I just, I, like the, the, the Dunkirk didn't do anything for me. Dark Tower is waned out. Oh, I'm like, definitely not going to see that. I was um, not happening. Um, so I don't know. We'll see. We and I don't see. know what else is coming because I'm just waiting for it in September. That's pretty much all I give a fuck about right yeah, now. Yeah. That's how. Well, you know what? You know I just saw. I didn't, and I, I, I don't know. Let me ask you this. Oh, I gotta... Ingrid Goes West is one I actually want to see. Which one? Ingrid Goes West. Okay. Is that what? That's one I actually do want to go see. Okay. Um. Like, so I didn't, how do you feel about this Jigsaw movie coming out? What Jigsaw movie? So Saw, doing, Saw 7? Yeah, they're doing, doing a, they're doing a Jigsaw movie. I don't want to see that shit. Okay. That's, I don't want to see, I don't even want to see the straight to DVD Child's Play film. Yeah, I, I I don't either, but here's what I didn't know. I think it's directed by James Wan. I don't care. 
Like, no, actually, no, it's not. Never mind. I thought it was, and it's not. They're not. They're not bringing him back. So, Is yeah, I don't. About James. Bond? No, they is. Uh, why are you doing? I don't. I don't know. Like, I don't. I don't understand why they're doing this. I don't either. Like they like it's just do do another do another Conjuring film or something. I don't know why we're bringing. Oh, he's back def- they're definitely gonna do that again. I mean, sh- that's their money maker. Yeah, uh, like just just don't. I don't know why Jigsaw is coming back. I don't yeah, know who don't, asked for him. Who called his name? I'm very, I'm very, I'm very, I'm, I'm very confused by this. I just, I, I don't, I don't, I don't know what's going on with this. So, yeah, I don't know what else comes out this year. Um, other than the big films, obviously, you know, we got Star Wars, J- uh, Justice League, Thor, and things like that. But now, they're that, even, I forgot they're doing another Flatliners too. I forgot they they're are? remaking that. They are. Yes, it's coming out September. Are they it's remaking out, it or is it Flatliners too, or is it a sequel? It is Flatliners. It is called Flatliners. Uh, it looks like Flatliners. All right, folks. Uh, the rest of the year is going to be really interesting when it comes to movie reviews, so we'll see how that goes. Hey, also, just real quick, because if anybody listens to this, uh, that's where they are. Um, a ghost story still sucks. <laughs> Yo, dude, do you know we have we there we have like sixty two comments Seriously? on the YouTube page. Yo, because motherfuckers keep coming and talking about how we didn't understand the deepness of that film. Like, white people are hilarious. Let me just tell you. Yeah, they, life is life is pointless and repetition and is a cycle and a recreation and et cetera, et cetera. Bullshit, bullshit, bullshit. <laughs> you smoked way too much fucking weed. You're not seeing anything great. Go get go get some outside, motherfucker. You need love and a hug. Eat a dick. Grow a pair. Seriously, that movie is trash. That like, movie I'm is sorry. So, like, no dude. way. That you're gonna convince me that I'm not deep enough to fucking understand a ghost story because it's not fucking deep. It's one of the most shallow fucking films I've ever seen, and it, it's bullshit. Like literally, they put a character in the film that is a representation of the whole fucking film, and he's the most. He's one of the most annoying characters I've ever seen. It, and it, he's one of the most annoying characters I've seen in the film this year. No, okay, dude, it, 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 it. and he represents the whole film in about. 10 to 15 minutes of unnecessary hippie dialogue. So, yeah. You leave as many comments as you want. You can comment until your fucking eyeballs fall out. Movie is trash. Comment until you throw a sheet over your face so nobody can see you cry. Movie is trash. Okay. The critics sat in their chair at- because they, they were affected deeply. Probably rethinking their life as any mean, rethinking if their life was any meaningful, was anything meaningful. The film was at, at is as depressing as 13 Reasons Why, but done better. It wasn't as cheesy as 13 Reasons Why, and it didn't have the show gratuitous violence to be as depressing as 13 Reasons Why. It is definitely not for everyone because if someone has put it in the wrong mindset, they could go off and kill themselves. That's just one of the few comments we've got on this film. Uh, just saying. Uh, the film wasn't that fucking deep, guys. Like it's, I, 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 You know what? I'm going to say, I love white people. You guys are so unbothered by everything else going on in the world that you find deeper meaning in films that don't have deeper fucking meaning. It's fucking amazing. This is an amazing. It's an amazing thing. So, anyway, folks, thank you guys very much for listening. Let's move trailer reviews on the MTR Network. Uh, find us on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, Google Play Music. Search for movie trailer reviews. Um, also, hey, if you're a fan of Secret Sauce by Latoya, we now are on iTunes with that show. Um, I'm I'm working with iTunes to get it under the provider page but you can still some uh search for it and subscribe to secret sauce you'll see our new logo out there um yeah folks we'll be back till next time we're out of here peace <laughs>